Hello and welcome to the install guide for Visor Technics module. But first, which bikes can you fit this to? Well, this module is specifically for BMW, GS and GSAs with a build year date of 21, 22 and 2023. And importantly, on the rear of the bike, you will already have multi-function indicators. And the simplest way to tell whether you've got them or not is look at these pictures up here. The top picture is of a multi-function indicator and the one below it is for the bikes that doesn't have multi-function indicators. And if you've got this lower indicator, you will already still have a tail light illumination system activated on your bike. But for the rest of us, uh, with these multifunction indicators, we need to fit this module because BMW, in their infinite wisdom, decided that when they fitted the multifunction indicators to deactivate the tail light illumination with inside that module on the rear. So we're going to put that back on so that we've got much more visibility and much more light for safety on the rear of our bikes. So. I'm going to break today into two separate installs. This bike I've returned back to original. So this is how your bike would be and how you would do an install for a bike that doesn't have any visor tech lights pre-installed. Up here on the right hand side are the timestamps so that you can work your way through. And then we're going to do a second one, which we're going to call installation two, which will be for those of you that have already fitted the really quite great Visor Technic indicator packs front and rear, because your installation is ever so slightly different. And I just want to show you what you're going to find when you take your seats off and how you need to connect it to integrate it with the current Visor Technic lights. So we'll do that and we'll call that install two. I'm also going to show you in a moment uh, a picture of all the tools that you need that you really don't need an awful lot. It's a very simple job. And what we're going to remove to start with are both the seats. We're going to remove this metal rack and the gray rack underneath. Now, uh, normally I wouldn't show you how to take seats off because this is really simple, but just in case you've got heated seats, which are brilliant by the way, um, there are a couple of connectors we just need to be careful with. So I'll show you how they come off. The, the metal rack, the top one is only held on with four bolts and the gray one underneath is an additional four bolts. So let's get started with the install. So these are the tools that we're going to use for this installation. So we need the module itself. We need the ignition key to take the seats off. We need a 3.8 ratchet, a 3.8 extension, and a TX40 to remove those eight bolts that hold the two racks on. We need a screwdriver with a TX25 to get the battery cover off, 10 millimeter spanner to disconnect the negative side of the battery, pair of side cutters, small piece of cardboard. Uh, this is 3M's cloth tape. It's also called tank tape or duct tape in different countries, or you can use electrical insulating tape and a couple of flat blade screwdrivers. This is all we need to perform this installation. If you do have seat heating, you're gonna find a connector like this for both the pillion and the rider seat. There is a little tiny tab that if you push in with your fingers or a screwdriver, you can see right here, this little tab moving in and out. All we need to do is grip that little lever and then gently wiggle and it comes out. It's very, very easy. It's the same process for the rider seat. These are handy connectors, so when you go to reinstall it, you can't install it the wrong way. The connector won't let you do it. It'll only go one way when we're doing the install. So the next thing we need to remove is the battery cover and we need to disconnect the battery by removing the negative terminal. So TX25, the cover's held on in three places. There are two push connectors, one in the bottom, one in the top right. Put your finger underneath this bottom edge and lift, put your two fingers in here, pull gently and the whole thing comes off. There are these little lugs that locate in these rubber grommets, top and bottom. Put this somewhere safe and don't lose the screw. Now the next thing we need to do is disconnect the battery. You're going to need your 10 millimeter spanner. These are sometimes a little bit tight to start with and just tap them. And then these terminals will come off very easily. And this is where our first piece of cardboard comes in. You're going to lift the negative terminal up ever so slightly and then slide in that little piece of cardboard and that just isolates the negative terminal from the battery and we know our bike is safe. So we can now move on with the rest of the insole. Now we can clearly see all eight bolts that we need to remove. So first, we're gonna remove the rack. The rack is held on with four, one, two, three, four. 
the all TX40. We're going to remove the rack first. And then secondly, we're going to remove this complete plastic housing. Now I'll speed this next bit up because you know you don't need to watch me. Um, just bear in mind, um, the first time you take these bolts out, they're going to be quite tight to get out. You're going to need to put some effort in to get these bolts out. And that's because the bolts are loctited into place. And when we go to do the reassembly, I'll explain what we're going to do when we refit them. But let's remove it. I will speed it up. We're going to use a small piece of cardboard so that we can't get the location of these bolts incorrect and just push the bolts through the cardboard like so, the two short ones on the rear and the two long ones in the front. This way we can't lose the bolts and we can't get them in the wrong place. And then this rack assembly is just going to lift straight off the bike. So then we have easy, much easier access to these four bolts. Again, they're quite tight to start with, but this comes off very quickly. And again, our second piece of cardboard, bolt safe. We can't get them wrong. We can't lose them. And then look how easy this is to get off. There's nothing really need to do. It just lifts straight off the bike. So that took just five minutes to take the seats off and those two racks. And now we've got all this space to work on. So inside, you're gonna find two packs. The first one has a couple of cable ties and it has three posi tap connectors. And I'll show you how we use those in a moment. And it also has the little visor technic module. Now what this is going to do, it's going to reactivate the tail light illumination within this tail lamp assembly. But importantly, what Visatech have done, uh, they made it even easier because the three wires are color coded to the BMW system. So on here, we have a blue, a gray, and a brown. All we need to do is ensure we connect the blue to the blue wire, the gray to the gray, and guess what? The brown to the brown. And it is quite easy to do. So I'll move the camera around so you can see the next step. We've got a cable tie to cut, and we've got to take the socket that goes from the wiring loom into the tail light out so that we can install this. Let's move on. So the next step, we need to cut and remove this cable tie, which is holding this socket onto the rear subframe. Very straightforward and easy to do. We're just going to cut it, take the cable tie off, and then move that socket out of the way. But importantly, what we need to do next is remove the socket from the wiring harness that goes into the tail unit. Now that is also fairly straightforward. If we look inside here, there is a little tiny lever that we can push in and out on the socket. It just moves in and out gently. We need to push that from this side over to the left side of the bike. And then using a second screwdriver, we're just gonna put a little bit of pressure behind the end of the socket. And by doing both motions at the same time, that socket comes straight out. And this is the part that we need to connect the Visor Technic module to. So let's have a look. And you can see on here that we've got brown, gray, and blue, exactly the same colors as there are on the module. Let's have a look and see how we connect them. So the next thing we need to do is peel back this insulating sleeve that is on the socket that goes into the tail lamp assembly on the rear. Now, mine's been off a couple of times because I've done several install videos. So your insulation sleeve may actually come even further up, up to the edge of the socket here. So we need to be very careful. You could use a screwdriver just to gently start to unpeel it like so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a pair of cutters and I'm gonna be very, very careful here and just nip, if I can get that at the right angle for you, and just carefully, so we're gonna come back a bit further, like so, and then have we got enough room? Yes, I think we have. Okay, so now we can clearly see we've got the three wires that go into the tail lamp from the wiring harness, and they are brown, gray, and blue. So what we need to do next is connect the module to these three wires. Uh, what we're going to use to perform that are these three connectors. So let me show you how these work. They've got two caps on. On one side, it's red. On the other side, it's gray. And what we want to do is work with the gray side first because the gray side, if we unscrew it, 
like so. Inside the end, and I'll show you a picture of this on the screen in a moment, there's a little tiny pin that's going to pierce into the cable to pick up a signal from these wires. And then the other side, which is gray colored, has a slot. And if I can catch that on the camera, you might just be able to see the slot in the center. So the slot is going to go through the cable from the underside, like so. So we'll start with the brown. So one more time, we've got the slot, if I can turn that so you can see it, and that's gonna go underneath and so that the cable runs, hopefully you can see that, now the cable's running through that slot. Then the next thing we want to do is to take the cap and we're gonna gently screw this on. Now bear in mind we have to do three. We're going to move this all the way back, like so, to about here, and then gently start to twist this on. And at some point you'll start to feel this bite into the cable. And that's fine because that's going to pierce a hole and pick up a signal from that brown wire. Now what's important at this stage is that we hold the base firmly. We do not want this twisting. We're going to twist the, the center section with our fingers, but the bottom bit, the gray part, we don't want to twist. So if I hold that tight, and then we're just going to screw this down like so, and that's it. And you can see we've got about a millimeter of gap between, if I can zoom in in a second, between the gray and the middle section of the red. We've got about a millimeter's gap and that's all we need. And you'll feel it's quite tight when we've got it in there. So what that means is that that pin in the center of the center section has pierced a hole and made a little tiny pink brick into the cable so that we can pick up a signal. So we just need to repeat the process. We'll move on to the gray wire next. So again, it's exactly the same. It's got a red end and a gray end. We're going to unscrew the gray end. Then we're going to place the gray end with that cut in the center channel through the center of the gray wire, like so, so that the gray wire is resting through the channel in there, and then take this end with the point and gently screw it onto the top. And again, at this point, we don't need to hold much because we just want it in the right place. Um, try and get them at the same angle, all pointing vertically upwards. It just makes it easier for the final stage. So that started to catch. So we'll then gently turn it around. We're going to hold the base again, this side, the gray side, and then we're going to screw hand tight that center section of the red, like so. And again, we'll just check. Okay, so we've now got, again, about a millimeter, if I move those cables around, you can see. It's always hard to film this. So we've got about a millimeter's gap with the gray wire. So that's now ready. We just need to perform that again with the blue wire. So we've now got our three connectors. I'll turn that around so you can see that. We've now got our three connectors fitted. What we need to do now is install the module onto these connectors. And that is also equally as simple and easy. So with our module that has the color coded wires, we can start the final part of the process. So what we need to do, now we're going to hold, we'll start with the furthest one away, which is the blue, we'll hold the center, this section here, and unscrew the other end of that cap, which is now red, like so. And in fact, to make life easier, we're going to unscrew the caps of all three, like so so that you can see. So I'll just show you inside. So inside the top section of these caps, there is a collar. And what we're going to do, we're going to take these wires, and in a moment, I'm just gonna show you this first, is these wires will just gently drop in the gap in between the collar and the side. I hope you, hopefully you can see that. It just drops literally inside there like so. But what we need to do first, we need to put the locking cap on. So we take the red part. So we take the red part that we've unscrewed. We're going to gently drop that thread facing upwards, like so, down 
over the cable. Then we're going to take the cable and gently place it in the center of that collar. I'll twist this so you can see. It fits in like so. Then we're going to take this cap, the red cap, and gently push it in the top. And then you can start to twist it in. And what that's doing, it's locking the blue cable tight against the metal pillar inside. And we just screw that down until you can't nip it up anymore. And you'll notice there's virtually no gap. Now that cable is in there and that is in really tight. That won't come out. So we just need to repeat the process for the others. So we've, we've got to make sure blue visor tech cable to the blue BMW cable. We're going to do the gray one, which is the middle one next. So we take the gray cable, we take our cap, thread facing upwards, drop it over the top of the cable, like so. Then take the gray part, drop it into the center of the collar. It just falls into place. Take the cap, gently start to screw the cap in like so. Hopefully you can see, this is actually quite difficult to do and film. And then you'll feel it start to bite and a little bit more. And again, give that a good tug so we know that that is caught and we've just got the last one. So last process. Now we have disconnected the battery. So I'm just gonna repeat this. It is important we make sure that we've connected the right cables to the matching cables on the harness. So just one more time, just go round and make sure you have got this exactly right. So brown to brown, gray to gray, and blue to blue. So we haven't got that wrong. So the next thing we need to do is put some insulation tape around this to seal this up, or you might use cloth tape. I think I'll use cloth tape because I've got to take it off again and do a, a, a separate episode later about this. Uh, but we need to seal those up and then plug this back into the tail unit. So what I'm gonna do at this stage is I'm gonna use a piece of black cloth tape. It's also called duct tape. And then I'm going to place our connections approximately in the center, like so, with all three connectors facing upwards. And then carefully fold this over, like so. And then you can firmly press all of this down Okay, now you might think that this doesn't look very pretty, and that is true, but this is more than enough. Those connectors won't come out. Uh, they, they, you can pull on them really, really very, very hard. They won't pull out of the cables. And this really is just to hold everything firmly and to stop it moving around. So the reconnecting is very easy. We're just going to gently fold this over, place it back under the top bar, and then we're going to reconnect it into the tail light and it'll just gently wiggle. And you can use your two screwdrivers again to push that firmly into place. If you watch and have a listen, you'll hear it click. That tab has just clicked and it's now moved back over to the right. So we've got our connection back in here. We've got our module. All we need to do now is put the cable tie back holding these two together. So we'll use the cable tie first, pass it through the subframe like so. I think we'll put the Visatec module in the middle, like this. It doesn't have to be really tight, it's just to stop it moving around, and then we can cut off the excess. So. That is it, we're done. We've got our three wires connected to the tail unit. We've pushed it back in firmly. We've got our cable tied back. Well, what we need to do next is reconnect the battery and do a quick test. Make sure everything's working as it should be. And then we can reassemble the racks in the reverse of how we uninstalled them. So we've reconnected our battery. We now need to do a test before we refit the rack assemblies. So let's turn the ignition on and check the startup sequence. So far it's as normal. Most importantly, now we have tail light illumination present from the tail light with the bike in its normal running mode. Uh, we're just gonna check to make sure everything works. We'll add in the indicators, brake light, indicator other side, brake light. We'll just add the hazards in, brake light. 
Hazards off. So, success. Tower light working. Now, at the beginning of the episode, when, I, when we first took these two parts off, I said I would talk about these bolts. Now, the bolts were originally held in with Loctite, and it was probably Loctite 243. This is what BMW or the assembly guys would have used on the production line. But let me share this. When I first took these bolts out, they were very hard to remove and almost equally as hard to put back in. So I think if you're doing this on a brand new bike, you don't need to worry about getting some new Loctite because putting these in after the first time I removed them, they were still very, very stiff to get in. And once they're done up tight, you're not gonna have any problems. The only time I would suggest you think about using something like the Loctite 243 is if you've had to remove this in the past. So I am going to use 243 just a little tiny bit on the end of the threads on all, all eight bolts but I don't think, I just want to be clear, I don't think um, if you're doing this for the very first time on a brand new bike, you're going to need to worry because you'll still have Loctite left on these bolts and you will find them quite stiff to get back in. Um, don't forget the last thing, we're going to use the long bolts in the front, short bolts on the back, and don't forget your spacers. Let's get everything reassembled and see what she's like. For those of us that already have the Visor Technic multifunction indicators installed on our bikes, replacing the BMW ones, we've got a couple of other things that we need to think about. Um, now, when you installed your wiring harness, this thing here, and don't worry, I'll zoom in in a moment so we can much more clearly see what we're going to do. We have two options. When we installed the wiring harness, we already had and have used one of these PosiTap connectors. And we use that to join the red wire from the Visatech harness to the blue wire that comes out of the tail light from the connector in the tail light. So that's what we've used already during our installation. So we can reuse, we don't have to remove it, we can leave it on the blue cable, but instead of connecting the red wire to it, we're gonna take the red wire out, and then we're gonna connect, as I've just shown you in the previous video, all three wires from the module. But then that leaves us with a little problem. Well, it's not a problem, but we've then got that red wire. What do we do with it? Well, we can actually, the PosiTap connectors are big enough, the red cap, because there's two, there's two colors, there's a gray and a red cap. The red cap is large enough for us to put two wires through there. So we can, in fact, join the red wire from the Visatech harness to the blue wire and then join them both together. Just to show you exactly what I was just trying to explain, we've now fitted the module. What we've done, we've reused the first connector, this one here, that we originally connected the red wire from this Visor Technic harness. This is how it was originally connected when we installed these Visor Technic multifunction indicators. So all I've actually done, I've removed this red wire, put it to one side, and then reused that connector, and then carried on with the rest of the install as per the first part of this installation guide. But then that leaves us with what do we do with this red wire? And we do need to reconnect it. The cap on the end of the PosiTap connectors is big enough for us to put two cables. So we will in effect have the red and the blue cable joined and then connected inside this PosiTap connector. So move the red cable out of the way. We're going to hold the body, unscrew the cap like so. And then take the cap off and we're left with our blue cable. Now we need about a centimeter in length of core visible. And then what we need to do is bring both the red and the blue cable together. We've got about a centimetre, hopefully you can see that. Uh, we'll then twist both of those firmly together like so. Then we'll take the red cap thread facing upwards. We'll place that over the top like so. And then we can push the cable into the collar and slowly do that cap up. Remember, we're holding the body of the posi tap and then we're just screwing this cap in. And then we just tighten that down like so. And then that will have gripped both the red 
and the blue wire nice and firmly. So you could stop at this and we could just seal this up with some cloth tape, but I'm gonna show you the other way of doing it. If you find that fiddly or you don't want to do it, what we can do is install a second posi tap, which, which you've got left over to this blue cable. So let's just do it the other way so that you can also see you've got two options. We'll unscrew that. So that's returned it to how we installed the kit from earlier on. We've now got our red wire left over. How are we going to connect that? So we're going to reuse one of these posi taps. We'll unscrew the gray part with a cut in it from the bottom. We'll pass the gray part through the center like that so that the blue cable is now running through the center of the gray part. And then the pointy end of the posi tap, we just gently screw down into there, like so. So that's gripped firmly. Now we can unscrew the top cap, this threaded part, slide it over our red cable. And then we just pass the red cable into the core as we've done earlier on, like so, and screw that home like that okay so that's the other solution we've got so we can then use take the red cable connect it to the blue or join the red and the blue inside that one posi tap on there so all we need to do now is put cloth tape on reconnect the battery turn everything on and do a test so let's have a look So that's it. It really was a straightforward, simple installation. I think for those of you that have never done anything like this before, you're looking at about half an hour from start to finish. Uh, but for those of you that have already fitted these Visatech indicators on the rear and on the front, you would have already had quite a bit of experience taking the panels off and the things that we need to remove. And you'll probably find that this will be about 20, 25 minutes from start to finish. Uh, but it is your responsibility, I'll just remind you, to read your instructions that that come with the module and then use this episode as a guide to assist you during that installation process. It is really important you read and understand and in particular you do not forget to disconnect your battery at the start and then reconnect it once you've finished at the end. Um, so I'm happy to answer any comments in the comment section below if you're watching this on YouTube but don't forget Visor Tech themselves have a really good customer helpline. You can send them both emails or give them a ring. There's a UK phone number um, if you've got any questions. So thank you for your time and I'll see you in another episode soon.